From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. Ransomware halts German newspaper circulation. Over the weekend, the German newspaper Heilbronn Stime suffered a ransomware attack, knocking phone and email communication out for days and causing it to cancel its print edition on October 14th. It published electronically and ran a six-page emergency print edition the next day. It will continue running shorter print editions, but said it cannot currently foresee when daily papers would return. During the attack, the paper took down the paywall on its site. The attack impacted the entire media group that owns the paper, also affecting circulation at three other publications. No word on a specific ransom demand or what group orchestrated the attack. Meta disputes Indian content moderation report. Earlier this month, the Indian publication The Wire reported that Meta gave an operative of the governing BJP party the ability to remove content from its platform. The Wire claimed its reporting came from internal documents, later sharing a picture of alleged emails and screenshots showing the system in effect. Meta called the story fake and the documents fabricated. In a follow-up blog post, Meta said that the system shown in The Wire's report wasn't an internal Instagram system. Rather, it was a Meta Workplace account set up with Instagram's brand insignia and name set up as a free trial after the initial Wire report published. Meta said it identified and locked the account. Kakao Talk called a national communication network in Korea. A fire at a South Korean data center over the weekend caused a disruption for more than 53 million users worldwide. The fire took down Kakao Talk, South Korea's top messaging app. While key for messaging, the app also handles online payments, ride hailing, gaming, and login verifications. It's a so called super app. As of November 1st, 2021, reportedly more than 90% of the country's 51.74 million people use the app. South Korean President Yoon Suk Yul described the impact of Kakao's outage as no different from the National Communications Network. Yoon's deputy spokesperson said the presidential office will launch a national task force to discuss the messenger services outage. This will look at if Kakao Talk uses its market presence to manipulate markets. If so, Yoon called for systemic measures from a nationwide level for the interest of the people. Mexico investigating spyware purchase. The Office of Mexico's Attorney General announced an investigation of the purchase of NSO Group's Pegasus spyware by the previous administration. The prior Attorney General's office reportedly acquired the spyware for 457 million pesos, about 23 million U.S. dollars. One probe will look at if this purchase followed legal requirements. A second probe will look into reported evidence that NSO illegally sold Pegasus spyware, although the office released no further specifics about that investigation. After a watchdog discovered Pegasus installed on the phones of three journalists, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador denied his administration used the software. And now thanks to this week's episode sponsor, SafeBase. Ah, the dreaded security review. It's important, but it can be a real pain. Endless emails, waiting for NDAs, dozens of PDFs, and those unwieldy questionnaires. I'm tired just reading that list. Luckily, there's a simple way to streamline the security review process, SafeBase. Their Smart Trust Center allows you to send one link to customers or prospects so they can easily get access to the security and compliance information they need. Learn more at SafeBase.com. Tornado Cash Blocked by Most Ethereum Blocks Last week, the U.S. Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Control issued compliance recommendations for transactions on the Ethereum blockchain to screen out transactions associated with the Tornado Cash cryptocurrency mixer. Coindesk reported that within 24 hours of issuing those recommendations, 51% of Ethereum blocks came into compliance. While it remains possible for Tornado Crash transactions to go through, it becomes more difficult as more validators and relays come into compliance. Many of the relays following the OFAC guidance came from Flashbots, an Ethereum-based research and development team. Rust rescues Linux from code memory problems. When Linus Torvalds announced support for the Rust programming language in the Linux kernel, he cited ending Linux code memory problems as a major factor. As if to prove this, five recently disclosed Wi-Fi security holes all came from poorly written C code, resulting in memory problems. These included a buffer overflow flaw capable of crashing a system or leaking kernel information triggered by beacon frames on any access point. All flaws received patches, which were sent out with the latest stable kernel builds on October 13th. Venus Ransomware Targets Remote Desktop This ransomware family only recently started appearing on the scene, with operations first noticed in mid-August 2022. 
According to the security analyst going by Linux CT and reports from victims, Venus gains access to corporate networks through Windows Remote Desktop Protocol. Once on a network, Venus will attempt to terminate processes associated with database servers and Office, delete event logs, and disable data execution prevention. This will also add a .venus extension to encrypted files and upload a ransom note to the temp folder. The group appears active with new submissions uploaded to ID Ransomware daily. Victims note Venus targeted RDP even running on non-standard TCP ports. Kanye buying Parler. We covered the social network Parler extensively in the wake of the January 6th Capitol riots. The app claims to be a free speech platform. It received blamed as a planning platform for the capital violence, which saw its app kicked off popular cloud hosting and app stores as a result. Most recently, Parler announced the formation of Parliament Technologies, which would see it pivoting to providing uncancelable cloud services. Now, Parler announced it's entered into an agreement with Kanye West to buy the platform in a deal expected to close later this year. Parliament will continue to provide ongoing technical support and cloud services powered by its recent Dynascale acquisition after the deal closes. This week on the CISO Series podcast, we'll be talking about cyber sales ABCs and why that often stands for always be creepy. One thing new CISOs might not be prepared for is the avalanche of unsolicited sales emails from vendors. We talk about advice for new CISOs about how to handle this deluge of requests to set up a meeting while still keeping it professional. Check it out over at CISOseries.com or look for it in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.